This tutorial is going to explain how to balance a redox reaction equation. So how do you balance an oxidation reduction reactions equation? And for a list of step-by-step -step instructions, if you'd like to follow along, you can go to chemistrybytes.com. But I'll go ahead and demonstrate the process here for you. And the main thing that we need to discuss first is that balancing redox reactions is much more complex than balancing a normal reaction um, in beginner chemistry classes. First of all, you need to understand that there are two process, processes at play, which are the oxidation process and the reduction process. So we will actually be balancing the half reactions of each, the oxidation half reaction and the reduction half reaction. So we're mainly concerned with each half reaction rather than just looking at what's happening in the reactants versus what's happening in the products. Also we'll be employing a few novel methods of how to balance these equations because as you can see in this example we have a manganese on one side and a manganese on the other and that's balanced but we have one iodine as a reactant and two iodines in the products so a simple two in front of the I minus will sort that out and that's um, the method with which we're pretty familiar is adding coefficients uh, to the to the equation to balance the number of atoms but what we're not used to is also having to balance the charges or the number of electrons because that's essentially what redox reactions are electron exchange reactions that um, need to have electrons added into the actual equation to balance these charges out so we will be doing that the other thing that we will be doing is adding in certain atoms for example we have four oxygens here on the reactant side and yet none here on the product side and that's not something that we're used to we're used to having that atom on both sides just in different amounts and just balancing it through a use of a coefficient addition so there will be a few differences here and there um, and the final difference is that you will al always be told in what kind of a medium this equation uh, or this reaction is taking place and that could be an acidic medium or a basic medium. We're going to start with an acidic medium because um, those are the first steps in balancing any equation and we'll al there will also be a video on basic uh, mediums and how to balance redox reactions uh, equations that are occurring in basic mediums and basic mediums are a little bit more involved than acidic but the main main steps are the ones that occur in the acidic medium and to uh, continue to a basic medium is just an addition of a few steps. So you have to learn how to do how to how to do the acidic mediums first, and then um, you can move on to the basic medium because essentially the basic medium uh, problems are a continuation of the acidic medium, just a couple of additional steps. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and examine this equation that we do have currently, and that is that we have this um, manganese and oxygen compound here as a reactant and we have manganese there as a product and we have iodine here as a reactant and molecular iodine as a product so we need to first identify what's been oxidized and what has been reduced that is really the first step in any balancing um, problem is that we need to identify the oxidation half and the reduction half so let's go ahead and do that now I can see here that this was iodine 1 minus and now it's iodine neutral so from 0 from negative 1 to 0 that is definitely an increase in charge therefore I know that this iodine has become oxidized so that was pretty simple just looking at the charges given I can see that this iodine was oxidized meaning that this manganese was reduced so MnO4 minus becomes Mn2 plus. And that is the first step. But let's go ahead and just confirm that this manganese has indeed been reduced by looking at the charge of or oxidation state of this manganese. So what is this manganese if when combined with four oxygen atoms still ye yields a negative one charge? So manganese 
plus these four oxygens, which are each a negative two, when added together should equal a negative one charge. So if you uh, need some practice in determining oxidation states or numbers and some of the guidelines, there is also a video on that. So manganese plus negative eight is equal to negative one, which means that manganese is equal to negative one plus eight if we move the eight to the other side, which means that manganese is positive seven. If this manganese here is a positive seven as a reactant and now it is positive two as a product, that is indeed a decrease in the charge, and that is indeed a reduction. So we just confirmed that manganese was reduced because we already knew that iodine was oxidized and only one thing here can be oxidized and reduced because we only have two uh, different uh, atoms at play. So that's the first step. The second step is to begin balancing like you normally would. So let's take a look here. We have one iodine as a reactant and two as a product. So we'll put a two here and that should balance this particular equation in terms of the number of atoms. There's really nothing else at play. So what else do we need to do? Well, of course, we need to balance the charges, and we will do that by sorting out the electrons. So what's happened with the electrons? If two iodines have were or were minus charges and now they are neutral, that means that every iodine has lost one electron. Two iodines means we've lost two electrons, meaning we've produced them and lost them. 2 minus on the reactant side, 2 minus on the product side. Now this oxidation half reaction is balanced with the number of atoms as well as the charges. We'll move on to the manganese half, which will be slightly more complex. So first of all, let's take a look. Give ourselves a little bit more room here by rewriting this. All right, so one manganese on the reactant, one manganese on the product. That's simple enough, that is balanced, but let's take a look here, we've got oxygen, four oxygen atoms on the reactant side, none on the product side. So how do we balance uh, these atoms that don't exist? There is n no oxygen here in which I can put a coefficient in front of. So what I'm going to do is follow my steps and in an acidic medium we're told that for balancing oxygen atoms we add water because these are aqueous solutions. So there is some water somewhere in there. For every one H2O we get one oxygen. We've got four oxygens here so we need four H2O's. So I'm going to add four H2O's on this side. So let's see what's happening here. Four oxygens on the reactant side got four oxygens on the product side. So by adding these four moles of water or four water molecules, I balance my number of oxygens. But notice how I've also added into this equation now some hydrogen atoms. How many? To the tune of eight. Four times two is eight. Eight hydrogens on the reactant side, I must have eight hydrogens on the product side. And because this is, a, this is an acidic medium, that means that I have lots of H plus floating around in that solution. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And I'm going to need eight of them, eight H pluses. Now eight H plus in the reactant, eight H plus in the product, and our number of hydrogen atoms are balanced. So finally, we have one manganese on both sides, four oxygens on both sides, eight hydrogen atoms on both sides, and our number of atoms are balanced. Last but not least is to balance the charges. So currently, I have a negative one and a positive eight on this side. That's negative one and po positive, positive eight. That's a total of positive seven as my reactants. Over here, I have two plus from the manganese and a neutral water. So I have a total of plus two charges on my product side. So how does positive seven become positive two? It must be decreased by five. So how do I add in five minus charges? Well, five electrons. Remember, we're trying to balance electrons. Again, remember here how manganese was a positive seven here, 
and it became a positive 2. The only way for that to have happened is for this manganese to have gained 5 electrons because positive 7 minus 5 is positive 2. And we can see that that's exactly what's happened. So really what this was was a positive or a plus 5 electrons. So there are the 5 electrons. Now, 5 minus and 1 minus is 6 minus. 6 minus and 8 plus is plus 2, which balances this. To a positive 2 on both sides. All right, last but not least, let's add up these, um, these two half reactions back into one. But before we can do that, we need to make sure that we have held by the one premise, and that is that matter must be conserved. That includes electrons. Therefore, the number of electrons lost in the oxidation process, which was two, must equal the number of electrons gained in the reduction process, which is five. Therefore, these two amounts are not equal. So we must equalize the number of electrons. So how do we do that? Well, let's rewrite what we have. We have two iodine minus gives us I2 plus two electrons. We have five electrons plus MnO4 one minus plus eight H plus gives us Mn2 plus and four H2O. So we need to equalize this five electrons and this two electrons. They must be the same. Whatever the iodine has lost and this manganese therefore has gained must be equal. So we need a common denominator and there's no smaller common denominator than 10. So in order to get 10 electrons here and 10 electrons here, we need to multiply these equations by a common denominator. So to make 10 electrons, we'll multiply this equation by 5. To make 10 electrons here, we'll multiply this equation by 2. And of course, everything on both sides of the equations must be multiplied by these factors in order to make to uh, keep everything consistent. So 5 times 2 is 10 I minus. 5 times 1 is 5 iodine molecules and 5 times 2 is 10 electrons. All right, then what? We have 2 times 5, that is 10 electrons. 2 times MnO4 minus is 2 MnO4 1 minus. 2 times 8 is 16 H plus. 2 times Mn2 plus is 2 Mn2 plus, and 2 times, eight, uh, two times 4 is 8 H2Os. All right, so we've multiplied everything all the way out, and that gives us our final two equations, where our spectators are, of course, our 10 electrons, which we can eliminate out. And finally, add together our two equations. What is the overall balanced equation? Let's write everything to the left of this arrow. That is 10 I minus and 2 Mn O4 minus and 16 H plus. On this other side we start with 5 I2 and 2 Mn2 plus and 8 H2Os. Now let's see if we have everything the way we want it. Let's do one final sweep. 10 iodines, 10 iodines, 2 manganese, 2 manganese, 2 times 4 is 8 oxygens, 8 times 1 is 8 oxygens, 16 because it's 8 times 2, 16 hydrogens and 16 hydrogens. Let's double check the charges. So number of atoms is checked. That's what we're typically used to. But what we need now is to check the charges. 
10 minus, 2 minus, and 16 plus. That yields 12 minus and 16 plus. That's a positive 4 net charge as a reactant side. This is neutral. That's 0. 2 times 2 plus is 4 plus. And water, of course, is neutral. So the net on the product side is also 4 plus. These two are equal. So our charges are checked. And last but not least, we said that this is occurring in an acidic medium, an, a an acidic aqueous solution. Well, there's the aqueous part. We've got lots of water. And dissolved in that, of course, is a bunch of hydrogen atoms or ions. And so they represent acid dissolved in water. So does this make sense that this reaction is occurring in an acidic medium? Yes, it does.